Thank you for coming to MTG Anonymous, your daily source for random free-to-play decks on MTG Arena. I would appreciate it if you would like, comment, and subscribe whenever you get the chance. Also, feel free to watch any other content that I've produced. I'll see you in the video. Alright, welcome to MTG Anonymous. It's been a little while since we've had some computer issues, but we're back at it again. We're going to be releasing videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from now on, because every day may increase the viewer base, but it's really hectic, especially when you work 7 14-hour shifts. So, we're doing Mono Blue Artifacts today. Let's click it. We got 2.9 average converted mana cost, which really doesn't matter since we'll, uh, we'll just play three lands in the beginning and we'll pretty much be good, usually. We have 27 creatures, 3 instants, 30 artifacts, 1 enchantment, and 24 lands. This is obviously standard. Uh, there's not really much more to go over. Uh, you could replace one of the islands with Castle Ventress, which gives us an extra scry engine, but I didn't really care, so I didn't put it in there, but you can obviously do that. First, we have our one drops. Ginger Brute for one. Colorless. You get a 1-1 one, one food golem with haste. Uh, for one, Ginger Brute can't be blocked this turn except by creatures with haste. And then for two and tap, sacrifice Ginger Brute, you gain three life. What's important about this is Ginger Brute can't be blocked except by creatures with haste most of the time, unless you need that mana specifically. So what we do is we put it out, we attack with it, and then... Actually, that so that this is basically giving us chip damage in the beginning, and then as we go further, then we'll be able to get creatures out that'll make it bigger. Inquisitive Puppet for one, you get a zero two construct. When Inquisitive Puppet enters the battlefield, scry one, and then that scry says, "Look at the top card of your library." You may put that card on the bottom of your library, and then exile it. Create a one one white human creature token. So this basically gives us three chances to block damage, more specifically large creatures without trample, uh, and then we get to make the 1-1 because of it. So the way it works is their attack step happens, and then you block, and in response to the block you exile it. No damage is dealt by that creature, and then you get a 1-1. So you're actually netting a creature technically. Opt for 1 blue, instant scry 1, draw a card. Again, we care about scrying. And then drawing is obviously helpful here. There are only three, but we only need three at the moment, so. Witching Well for one blue. When it enters the battlefield, scry two. So for this one, instead of putting one, look at the one card, you look at the top two cards, and you can put them on the top or bottom, and then in any order. And then for three and a blue, sacrifice it, draw two cards. Again, we like drawing cards in this deck. More specifically, we want to draw the things that we can put into our graveyard. If we keep our hand full, we can drop stuff in the graveyard and then we'll be able to get it back, but that's for another time. Court on min, uh, monitor for one and a blue, you get a 1 4 construct. Enter the battlefield and tap target artifact or creature you control. There are two creatures we care about untapping this deal, Overseer or Emery, but we'll go over that once we get there. Prismite for two, you get a 2 1. Pay two, add one man of any color. The reason this is in here is actually for its power and toughness. Two one is kind of important early. So if we can get this turn two, then we'll be able to block. Uh, there's no way to make colorless man in this deck, so we'll have the man we need. But uh, once we get the steel overseer out, and then its two one status will be kind of important. We can swing with this early, and usually uh, mana dorks will not block this, so. Steel Overseer for two, you get a 1-1 one, one Construct tap, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each artifact creature you control. So, so far we've gone over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 artifact creatures that are all less, or that are all less than 3 CMC. So, pretty much we're gonna have some real, we're gonna have a lot of creatures out early. The best ones for this card are the Prismite and the Corridor Mentor. Corridor Mentor, when this taps the first time will become a 2-5 and then that's pretty important and then every turn it'll be able to tap and untap and tap and untap so and then for prismite it'll be a 3-2 the first time and then as so on and so forth as it goes on it'll get bigger inquisitive puppet is also pretty good since it'll be a 1-3 it'll be able to block things 
Steel Overseer is probably the most important card in this deck. And the second most important card is Emery Lurker of the Lock. For two and a blue, you get a 1 2 Merfolk Wizard. This spell costs one less for each artifact you control. By the time we get this, it'll be worth one blue. When it enters the battlefield, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. Again, most of these cards are artifacts, so the only thing we'll miss are the opt, the ley line, and then the island. And then tap, choose target artifact in your graveyard. You may cast that card this turn. So basically what will end up happening is they're going to kill our overseer, we're going to bring it back, we're going to tap once we can. Or we're going to let the corridor mentor die, and then when it does, the next turn we'll tap it. We'll be able to uh, use it. And then we'll untap Emery, and then we'll be able to do things over and over again. Uh, a another addition to this deck would be some way to sacrifice Corridor Mentor. So that way we'd be able to do that. Because then uh, it enters the battlefield for the first time on the play. Then we sacrifice it to something. We play, use Emery's ability to grab it again, and then it untaps it again. So we'd be able to use Steel Overseer three times if that were the case. Clockwork Servant for three. You get a 2-3 Gnome. When it enters the battlefield, if, if at least three mana of the same color were spent to cast it, draw a card. Since we only have blue, that's the only thing that's going to be able to use. So every time we play this, we'll draw a card. Drawing cards is pretty important. 2-3 status is also important. First time Steel Orbs is used, it comes a 3-4. So we're starting to flood the board with creatures relatively quickly. Hinge Walker for three, you get a 2-2 Golem. If at least three mana of the same color were spent to cast a spell, Hinge Walker enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it. What's important about this one is obviously we're going to use three, so it's going to be a three, three. Tap Steel Overseer, it's a four, four. Anvil Rot Raptor for four, you get a two, one bird as flying in first strike. Flying says a creature with flying can't be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach. And then first strike, a creature with first strike deals combat damage before creatures without first strike. So we're going to make that thing big. Probably our opponent won't have any blockers, and then we'll just be able to get in. Leyland of Anticipation. This is a one of. If we get it on the first turn, we're going to play it. Uh, if it's in your opening hand, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield. You may cast spells as though they had flash. Flash says you may cast a spell with flash any time. You can cast an instant. So basically now we're able to use Emery's ability on our opponent's turn. So we'll be able to get things back as we want. Mystic Forge for four. This is the third most important card in our deck. You may look at the top card of your library any time. You may cast the top card of your library if it's an artifact or a colorless non-land card. The only thing we wouldn't be able to play is opt Emery of the Lurk. Uh, Emery, and then Ley Line of Anticipation. Everything, and, well, and the lands. Everything else will be able to play. And then for tap, pay one life, exile the top card of your library. We won't do that because we want all of these to enter the battlefield. So what they're what they're doing doesn't matter. God Pharaoh Statue for six spells your opponent ca cast cost two more to cast. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses one life. We have three of them in there because we need to get this out as fast as possible. Preferably about turn six, because then our opponent's stuff is going to cost more, and we they lose life each turn. A uh, good combo with the God Pharaoh's statue is uh, well, actually no, that doesn't that doesn't really matter. We'll we'll talk about that in, a, in another deck tech. Meteor Golem, there are two copies for seven. You get a three three Golem when it enters the battlefield. Destroy target non land permanent opponent controls. Emery. Late game, we'll grab Meteor Golem every single time. And then we'll get to destroy something of our opponents every turn. Then there are 24 lands. Well, let's go ahead and do that. Let's add another one. So, Castle of Interest, it enters tapped unless you control an island. We'll control an island. Tap, add blue, and then tap two and two blue. Scry two. So, it's pretty good. So, this deck has been undefeated so far uh the converted mana cost is a little high and then there there are different ways to to get rid of that but you'd actually just have to get a draw engine first but 
It plays really well, and uh, Wednesday, because this deck will be coming out on a Monday, Wednesday, we will be playing it, and you'll get to see how it works. And that's all I have for this video, sub 10 minutes. If you would, please like, subscribe, and comment. I really enjoyed you watching the video. Later.